G'day folks, Chris Nitzo, Weather IQ. Welcome to a Weather IQ update this evening, uh, looking at Tropical Cyclone Fina, which has recently been re-upgraded back to a Category 2 system. It has been developing nicely, well, nicely could be in a subjective word, uh, through the day. The system is tracking in a general southwesterly direction. Now, very curiously tonight, and for Darwin residents especially, the biggest curiosity tonight is going to be whether the cyclone interacts with land and starts moving further to the west overnight so in a mo bit more of a west southwesterly motion or whether the cyclone will interact with the land but that land interaction won't uh, create any significant deviation the worst case scenario for darwin is if the land mass creates no significant deviation and the cyclone continues tracking southwest we'll see a, a direct crossing or a, a situation where Darwin ends up in the destructive core of the cyclone circulation tomorrow evening uh, versus a cyclone that deviates a bit more to the west, Darwin may just escape outside of the destructive core. So all eyes tonight on and overnight tonight into very, very early hours of tomorrow, how the cyclone will interact with the landmass. Models are divided in what they do here. Some of them bring the cyclone in a more westerly direction, sparing Darwin the worst. Some of them beeline directly over the top of the peninsula and put it over the Coburg Peninsula and put it straight over the top of Darwin or within 50 kilometres. Why do I keep harping on the 50 kilometres? If you didn't watch our update last night, let's have a look. 50 kilometres matters because that's what we estimate based on all the available evidence of the wind field, the destructive wind field, not the gales. The gale wind field is much larger, but the stuff that's going to destroy things is much smaller. The gales could knock down a couple of trees, absolutely, knock down a couple of fences, absolutely, but they won't create much structural damage. Destructive winds are, as you can imagine, destructive and not just destructive to flora. So what we're looking for here is how close does the centre of the circulation get to Darwin? Now, on the current Bureau of Meteorology track map, bearing in mind that there is still a massive error margin, you can still see for this time, given the fact that the cyclone is literally 24 hours out and we still have an error margin as of now at uh, 7 p.m. NT time of 200 kilometres. That's a massive error margin. And that brings into, the, brings into a light the possibilities of that slightly more westward shift of the cyclone or the possibility that the cyclone will continue on its merry way directly southwest. So what we've got here is a, is a track forecast that sort of marries the two scenarios up a little bit and sort of splits the difference. Now, in this scenario, this is why 50 is so important. In this scenario, Darwin closest point of approach of the cyclone is literally 53 kilometers away that means the destructive core is on your doorstep but not there yet night cliff which is right on the coast it's in there in the destructive core that's the sort of finicky numbers that we're dealing with here so understand every single jut south of that track or jut north of that track is absolutely crucial so every time i'm sure the bureau that are putting this out they're very very thoughtful and mindful of exactly where the cyclone center goes because of that 50 kilometer radius 50 kilometer radius of the destructive stuff I think, there's, I think it's a foregone conclusion now that even if the cyclone does adopt a more westerly track, Darwin will still find itself at some stage in the gale radius. It's the destructive stuff that we're interested in and concerned about. At this stage, the cyclone appears to be at its closest point of approach to Darwin sometime tomorrow evening, likely between about 6 and 10 p.m. at night. Uh, it may even be delayed further if this land interaction slows the cyclone down a bit in the next few hours or in the next 6 to 12 hours. But at this stage, sometime tomorrow evening is when the cyclone will be at its closest point of approach to Darwin. Right, when it comes to rainfall effects, the cyclone won't be producing very heavy rain over Darwin tonight. Uh, there will be some gusty thunderstorms, and we've seen those uh, contracting towards the coast. As we go into the overnight early morning period, we're still not expecting very heavy rain, but the moderate rain will start to increase in intensity as the morning goes on. But the 
it, the heavier rainfall aspects will start probably from mid to late afternoon and peak into the early evening, into the early to mid evening, and then the rainfall will start to settle down early on Sunday. But it is going to be a very wild and woolly evening in this setup where the cyclone is right on that borderline of being right in of, of that destructive core. Now, the heavy rain is primarily going to be along and in the core of the cyclone and just to the east of the core of the cyclone. So that's why we can see this purple area extending east of the core, like you can see on your screen there. Right, our rainfall between now and Monday. We're expecting two to 400 millimetres, but it's going to be very coastal. The rain is going to be quite coastal. We're not expecting that two to 400 inland. It's going to be very coastal and it's going to be very short lived. So all of this rain is falling in about a 24 hour period. So just be aware, two to 400 isn't much from a cyclone, but because it's happening all in one go, in one 24 hour period, that's the issue that we're going to find uh, with the system that's going to create fairly significant flooding in populated coastal areas. From a surface wind perspective over Darwin, we're not anticipating very strong winds over the city, not until the cyclone is on our doorstep. Because of the way it's coming at us, the winds are going to be offshore. So that means we've got to get really close, up close and personal with the cyclone on the way in for it to be producing very strong winds over the city. So you can see here, the cyclone's core gets right on our doorstep before our winds start to ramp up. And we can see winds sustained at about 50 knots or so. Uh, developing through the back end of the uh, back end of the afternoon or more likely the early evening the cyclone passes its closest point of approach and then some really strong winds continue after the cyclones push through but this time the winds are coming directly from the ocean so we're going to feel those winds a lot more than we're going to feel the southerlies because the southerlies are going to be obstructed to some degree the northerlies are going to be coming in unobstructed straight off the water so you're going to feel the backside of the cyclone really strongly both from a rain perspective and from a onshore wind perspective now how strong those winds get we're not going to talk about tonight we're going to talk about that tomorrow because we need to ascertain whether we're going to get that destructive wind field or whether we're going to be missing that destructive wind field. And it's too close to call tonight. We'll call it tomorrow, and then we'll let you know. Have a good night.